On April 30th, 2017, at DreamHack Austin, a tournament featuring Wizrobe, Axe, Sfat, Plup, Leffen, Mewtwo King, Mango, and Hungrybox, the Melee community witnessed something they hadn't seen since 2013. Ice Climbers in Grand Finals of a Major Tournament. Beating Mango and Mewtwo King, Chudat, a frankly ancient Ice Climbers player, would make it to Grand Finals to compete against Hungrybox. Chu yezing his way into Ye Grand Finals. Nightmares of Yeyas. Emerging from loser's bracket, Chudat went on to win the first two games, closing in on a bracket reset, but then lost the next three games. Hungrybox thus becoming the champion. As much as things wow. change, they stay the same. God damn. Chudat second place, Hungrybox first. On that fateful game three, however, the turning point of the set, something incredible happened. Something then unknown. Something no one could know until it was too late. The last wobble anyone would ever get in grand finals of a major. Yeah, the best players against Ice oh. always say oh. that they say, Oh! Oh! Uh -oh. Wobble. That He's going to wait for the wobble. Yeah. There he gets it. He was trying to mash his heart out. You saw, you saw Hungry Box? Yeah. Chuda very smartly waits for his name. He's like, okay, I have the best mark of the game. Get her in perfect position, yeah. And that's, by the way, a horrible thing to do. Wobbling is both really easy and really stupid, and is Melee's most famous infinite combo. By grabbing an opponent with the main climber, then alternating a pummel with an attack from the secondary climber, usually down tilt, forward tilt, or blizzard, the climbers can lock you in hit stun, making it literally impossible for you to escape past a certain percent, leaving your fate in the literal hands of someone and their ability to tap the A button to the beat of Through the Fire and Flames by Dragon Force. Just two years after DreamHack Austin 2017, a community-wide wobbling ban would begin to take form, first at Get On My Level 2019 with other majors soon following. The final nail in the coffin being Smash World Tour's announcement in 2020 that all tournaments on its circuit would have wobbling banned. Then, because there's no point running a different rule set than the most prestigious tournaments, the remaining smaller scenes running locals and regionals followed suit, resulting in more than a few top ice climbers quitting the game. Prior to this unanimous banning, though, wobbling was a bit more contentious in terms of legality. Many older, now legendary tournaments had different rulings on the technique. For example, Genesis and Genesis 2, the first two entries in what is now maybe the most important Smash tournament of the year, had wobbling legal in its rule set, while every big house until the Big House 5 in 2015 had wobbling banned. Most notably, however, wobbling was legal at all iterations of Evo Melee was featured at. And with wobbling legal, oh. and it begins. Which is what allowed Wobbles, the technique's namesake, to reach second place at EVO 2013. That's, That's it. it! Wobbles is in grand finals! Arizona has done it! The Ice Climbers have been free! Now, ironically, the Ice Climbers have picked up their best individual set win in, like, a decade, only a few months ago, when Ice Climbers' main slug beat the number one player in the world with no Wobbles. Ow. Oh my god. That's oh, a back air. Oh my Slug god. Slug upsetting Golden Guardian Zane. Man, who could have seen this coming? Slug? Slug. Instead of wobbling, Slug made use of the similarly volatile, but not nearly as simply performed infinite combo known as handoffs. A technique where you literally hand an opponent off between climbers with alternating grabs. Down throw from you, and forward throw from your backup climber. Ad infinitum. Kinda. But we'll get to that. Handoffs are much more difficult than wobbling, requiring knowledge of different weight classes to effectively perform. Lighter characters result in faster handoffs, as the animation for the Ice Climber's weight-dependent down throw speeds up with less heavy characters. This is in contrast to the rhythmic tapping of a wobble that's consistent across all members of the cast. DI and percent complicate things further, and proper DI, which heavily depends on character, can tighten the already small frame windows of a handoff, which are typically only two to five frames for relevant characters. Some characters' limbs tighten the windows of a handoff as well. Marth, for instance, is more difficult than he would be if not for the developer's decision to make legs and arms ungrabbable. Ah! 
Conversely, Pikachu, who has a chunky body and small limbs, is more easily handed off between climbers. Which is funny, because Pikachu struggled with ICs when wobbling was legal, yet even with it banned, is more susceptible to handoffs than most. Keep in mind though, that to combo to death with handoffs, Ice Climbers players have to perform multiple handoff repetitions, or multiple 2 to 5 frame links. These do become easier as you develop muscle memory though, as the time between you inputting down throw and you pressing the Z button to grab with the backup climber will always have a constant window of at least two frames for each weight class. Yeah. This is where he's been making all his money, so... Right, right. In addition to these complexities, handoffs are only true infinites near the edges of the stage and platforms. Attempted anywhere near center stage will result in the backup climber's AI randomly choosing between each of the four cardinal throws, two of which the main climber can't effectively convert into a handoff. Near the edges of the stage and platforms though, the backup climber will always attempt to throw the opponent off stage, and this predictable behavior is what allows infinite handoffs to work. If you know your AI climber is always going to throw an opponent toward the ledge, you can always be ready to re-grab it to complete the loop. You can also forward throw handoff instead of the usual down throw handoff, which has a constant timing across all characters due to its weight independent animation. But wait, if you can just forward throw and not have to worry about the different regrab timings depending on weight with down throw, why not just always forward throw? Well, for one, forward throw has more lag at the end of it than down throw, meaning when the backup climber regrabs an opponent after the main climber's forward throw, the main climber is stuck in an animation longer than if they had down thrown. Put simply, there's much less leniency for the main climber to regrab. Two, because you end up having to move forward to regrab from a forward throw, you take up the space where handoffs are possible more quickly than when using down throw. And because each handoff repetition causes Nana's AI to forward throw your opponent anyway, inching you toward the edge, eventually you'll run out of room to be able to handoff at all. And you want to get as many handoffs as possible to maximize damage output, to ensure you can convert the handoff into a kill. Now, it is possible to continue handoffs from the very, very edge of the stage, after you've run out of stage, so to speak, but by all means this is TAS only in terms of consistent performance. So, how many handoffs did Slug get on Zane to win that historic set? Four three of which granting around 30%, and only one which resulted in Zane's stock being taken. Like down smashing, okay, huge, wait, oh, the old school! Insane handoff right now, the Blizz Opal! There is, of course, one more infinite the Ice Climbers have. It's called the Cuckold. The, uh, the Cuckold, that one is the PM Tech. It's essentially a version of the handoff where instead of the main climber facing toward the ledge, they face away from it. First, the main climber grabs the opponent. Then, with the same directional input, the ice climber player forward throws the opponent and wave dashes forward with the backup climber. The backup climber is made to turn around, then re-grab the opponent, where, just like a normal handoff, the backup climber's AI forward throws the opponent toward the ledge, back to the main climber in a glorious, infinite loop. Pretty cool. But unfortunately, due to just how many tight windows are in just a single repetition, cook holding is harder than normal handoffs. Beyond the madness that is Ice Climber's infinites though, there are other things like wall infinites, which I've talked about before, where a player is stuck being attacked against a wall with certain moves, like Fox's Shine. And sacrifice Nana instead. Um, technically that was Popo. -po. Ah. Oh, he's doing the, um, He's doing the thing, I know he's this, doing the thing. I know this is the Cypher Phoenix, because it's in that one MDVA PR. Oh, dude! 
Yeah. You can also do an infinite by doing Puff's Sing Stall, a technique where you use up B from ledge, cancel it with a ledge grab, and repeat. If you happen to catch an opponent with Sing's hitbox while doing this, you can keep them in this sleeping state forever. Though I wouldn't really call this an infinite combo, per se. And like wobbling, this is banned in competitive play. Finally, in teams, if you and your teammate are left with just one of your opponents, you can do things like this. Or this. Or this. Or this. Or this. Big thanks to Alpine, Corrit, Chenry, Dizzy, Droid, Dubs Rewatcher, Evan M, Game Player 1500, Grarlic, GR Smash, Harpo Dog, I Don't Even Play Melee, John B, Justin P, Catharg, Lenny M, Little, Lonely Rolling Egg, LRC Napkin, Marky, Matthew B, Moa, Muse Tail, NK Cyborg, Ordice, Pierce H, P Jiggles, PM Casey, Rogue GNW, Rolo, Sega Monkey, Self Die Man, Shep If You Tried Meditation, Storm, That Rack, Trendrecht, Turn Down for Walt, Wyverin, and Yashichi. <laughs>